our final speaker for this session is Archana Chako, and I'm very happy to welcome her. She's a uh, respiratory and sleep, a sleep physician from um, Brisbane Children's Hospital in Brisbane and also the specialty room, so that's for you. Thank you very much, Archana. All right, probably should figure out how to use this. Just the green button? I think so. <laughs> yeah, green, go. Um, hi, I'm Archana Chako. Thanks for having me here today. Um, today I thought I'd present on the topic, uh, whoa, back. Um, Paediatric respiratory music and the cacophony of coughs. Um, so, with the COVID pandemic, I've seen um, a lot of hypervigilance and cough, and I thought it'd be uh, useful for you guys to have an idea of how to manage chronic cough um, with an algorithm and when to refer. So, I'll start with a case. So, Sana, she's a ten, oh sorry, two week old, ah, two year old girl with a ten week history of chronic cough. Um, it's been wet every day. Mum says that she can feel a rattle or wheeze when she holds her. Um, there's not been a recent fever or runny nose. Um, Mum said that she's previously well, but has had uh, what she calls daycare illnesses in the past. She's seen a GP who's listened to her chest and said um, it's clear and there's nothing wrong. She's trialled Ventolin and um, prednisone with limited effect. Um, and her chest x-ray is normal. So this is a typical case of protracted bacterial bronchitis. Um, when approaching chronic cough, um, the first thing to do is define the duration of cough. So this is different to adult definitions. So in kids, an ac acute cough is two weeks, sorry, I can't get my weeks and months right. Um, <laughs> um, two, yeah, so two weeks and a chronic cough is four weeks. Um, though there's no studies that address the definition of chronic cough in kids, um, this is based on expert opinion and the reason behind this is that um, it's thought that coughs associated with an upper respiratory tract infection last about one to three weeks in 90% of the cases. Chronic cough um, impairs quality of life for children and it also uh, usually represents an underlying sinister etiology. So the threshold of four weeks was chosen um, in order to capture these sinister etiologies, things like uh, inhaled foreign body and bronchiectasis. The definition in adults is eight weeks. Um, I then find it useful to break it down into either non-specific cough and specific cough, just remembering that there is some overlap between the two. So for uh, specific cough, that's usually a, a wet cough um, and you usually have signs and symptoms of an underlying etiology, so specific cough pointers. Um, for non-specific cough, that's uh, usually a dry cough and you lack the specific cough pointers. So on history, a specific cough pointer may be a wet productive cough, um, especially in the morning wheeze or dyspnea. Now, you must ask, someone um, asked me the other day, how do you know if a two-year-old's um, dyspneic? And really, that, it is a hard thing to pick on history, but um, generally, parents report that they're a bit slower than their peers. They're often um, pausing uh, at the park when they're playing, and they look puffed. Um, other things about wheezing you should ask about is whether they um, wheeze with laughing or crying in younger children. Um, in older children, you can have children that wheeze with playing an instrument. Um, so that's, that's something to ask about as well. It's something subtle. Uh, other things are um, choking, even if it's days, weeks or months prior, um, or coughing on feeds, and neonatal onset of symptoms and any other underlying medical condition. Um, specific cough on exam well, the specific cough pointers on examination include things like um, failure to thrive, clubbing, um, other respiratory chest findings, cardiac, abnormal cardiac examinations. Um, the thing that I got from training was picking classic cough sounds. It might be a bit harder for you um, when you don't hear coughing every day of your life for like eight years, um, for eight hours a day. Um, but um, a wet cough in the mornings is particularly suggestive of bronchiectasis. Um, a barking or honking cough 
um, can suggest tracheomalacia or um, psychogenic cough and um, staccato cough, chlamydia pneumoniae, or paroxysmal cough, uh, pertussis. So I've got a little clip of a honking cough from the other day. I think you got the idea, maybe. Um, so children with chronic cough should at least have one chest x-ray during that episode of chronic cough. Um, now, it is hard sometimes to explain this to parents. So I'm, I'm very happy to have it left to when they come and see us. Um, sometimes if you get it done at Queensland X-Ray, there's so many other practices now that it's hard to actually access the images which we like to look at. Um, and this is to exclude um, specific cough pointers on chest X-Ray. So the causes of chronic cough in children vary, um, but in all cases, protracted bacterial bronchitis is the most common cause, and I'll come back to this shortly. Um, though airway anomalies and um, inhaled foreign bodies should not be missed, and you should ask about choking episodes on every cough history. Um, so things like asthma as a cause of cough become um, more common in the older age group, more like adolescent adults. Um, so based on these causes, um, breaking it down into the algorithm specific, non-specific, wet and non-specific dry cough. I'll take you through these just a sec. Um, so specific cough, that's usually um, cough with specific cough pointers, usually requires a respiratory physician to look after them. Um, and normally, oh sorry, when I took that slide out. <laughs> so. Yeah, normally what I'd uh, do is investigate based on um, the signs and symptoms that I find. So a CT bronch or uh, sweat tests, ciliary brushings and so on. There's a lot of genetic tests that have come out for primary ciliary dyskinesia now, so it makes it a little bit easier. But um, it costs patients if it's not ordered um, through the public hospital in Queensland. Um, so moving on to non-specific wet cough. This is... Um, Usually uh, a daily wet cough for four weeks, um, so with no specific cough pointers, uh, it's reasonable to start a two-week course of oral antibiotics um, with a provisional diagnosis of protracted bacterial bronchitis or PBB. I'll come back to this in a minute. Um, if you do see a response, that's great. Um, the diagnosis was probably PBB, um, but don't forget about the child. I would monitor them over the next year um, and if there is a recurrence, I'd refer. If there's only a partial or no response after two weeks of antibiotics, I'd also consider referral. Um, so, oh, so this is where this slide went. Um, <laughs> I'll skip that. Uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis. Um, it's common in the age group less than five um, as the most common cause of wet cough, actually. Um, and often misdiagnosed as asthma. It needs three of the following things to make the diagnosis. So a continuous wet cough for four weeks, um, lacking specific cough pointers, and responds to a two-week course of antibiotics. So that's a diagnosis you make on retrospect, essentially. Um, the typical pathogens involved include um, Haemophilus influenza, Strep pneumonia, and Moraxella catarralis. Um, I'd like to reiterate that um, if there's no or partial response to oral antibiotics or there's a long history, so two to three months of daily wet coughing, or you have recurrence, that two to, that's two to three episodes in a year I'd refer. Um, and the reason I harp on this point is that protracted bacterial bronchitis is thought to be a precursor for um, chronic suppurative lung disease and bronchiectasis. Um, so a child that's had a recurrence of PBB 12, within 12 months of the index PBB case, they're at 10, 10 times increased risk of having bronchiectasis um, diagnosis made uh, in five years. That's compared to children that have not had PBB. Um, it's also early bronchiectasis is reversible in children, unlike in adults. So it's very important to um, have treatment started uh, early. So antibiotics aren't the devil. Um, so in a good quality randomised controlled trial in children with um, chronic cough, 
Um, we saw a good uh, response in um, reduction of chronic cough, about 46% compared to only 16% in placebo. And this result was statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.006. Um, and most children, well, the majority of children had cough resolution by the 14-day mark. Um, there's also a good quality random, oh, sorry, systematic review um, that looked at all the randomised control trials of chronic cough in children um, and showed that there was a clear benefit with antibiotics uh, with the number needed to treat for benefit being three. Um, so we suggest a two-week course of oral antibiotics and the antibiotic of choice is usually augmented and that's because it's active against the beta lactamase producing haemophilus. Um, other options can be cephalosporins or trimethoprim sulfamoxazole, uh, but azithromycin is not recommended because there's, uh, it doesn't, there's no studies looking at the efficacy in chronic cough and um, there's increasing fears of uh, resistance for haemophilus and strep pneumonia. So, non-specific dry cough. Um, this is a difficult, it's quite difficult and a lot, the, uh, recently with COVID I've seen all, an increase in this. Um, so, non-specific dry cough, it's, the first step would be to assess how worried the parents are. If they're not too worried, you could um, reassure and take a watch and wait approach. Um, most of these are viral illnesses or post-viral cough, but a lot of the times they're troublesome. So recently people are being sent home from school, um, even though they don't have any active viral symptoms and COVID negative on PCR and um, RAT. So um, it's, it's okay to trial bronchodilators or a low dose uh, inhaled corticosteroid, but um, these should be time limited trials for under a month. If there's no response, I would stop. I usually get the parents to take a diary and see if they think there's a, a change in the frequency of coughing during the day. Um, so if you do see a response though, um, don't assume that, that the child has asthma. Um, don't make the diagnosis of asthma because in children, isolated chronic cough without the specific cough pointers for asthma is very rare. Um, if you do keep them on the, the inhaled corticosteroid, I'd monitor regularly um, and either step up or step down therapy. If you are getting to moderate or high doses of ICS, I would um, consider referral for assessment. Um, so what to refer? I'd uh, refer all specific chronic cough. Um, all specific, sorry, non-specific wet cough, either not responding or partially responding to two weeks of antibiotics. Um, those with a long history of wet cough, so two to three months, or even those with um, recurrent uh, PBB diagnoses, at least two to three in a year. And I'd also consider referring non-specific dry cough, not responding to um, the watch and wait therapy, watch and wait, or basic asthma therapy. So um, I thought I'd just take you guys through how sputum's cleared from the lungs, um, because this would be uh, interesting for you to hear, uh, because it's what we do as a respiratory physician when we see a child, um, and how we work the child up. So, sputum um, is cleared from the peripheral airways to the, the central through the peripheral, um, well, sorry, mucociliary clearance and the cephalo bias, mechanism um, and then it's cleared from the central areas by uh, an effective huff or cough. So for children, um, you need normal breathing, normal cilia, normal mucus um, that's not, inf not affected, infected and um, normal airways. So that's both intrinsic and extrinsic. So if you break that down then into what's abnormal breathing, that's um, neuromuscular conditions, um, abnormal cilia, so you've got the primary cilia dyskinesia, abnormal mucus, that's mainly cystic fibrosis um, in kids. Uh, so that's not infected, so you don't want either usual or unusual infections and they should have a, a normal immune function for that. And then you've got the airway anatomy. So you've got intrinsic and extrinsic. So the intrinsic things are like um, 
malaysic conditions, tracheomalacia, bronchomalacia and so on. Um, tracheosophageal fistula or laryngeal clefts. Um, extrinsic, mainly what we see are um, compression from the heart or great vessels. <laughs> and <laughs> um, so when you think of that and then think of this case, so um, Flynn is a 10-month-old boy who's had a five-month history of um, daily wet cough. Um, the mum had said that it started after a rhino adenovirus infection and um, the GP rightly treated with a two-week course of Augmentin, um, but unfortunately a few days later he had another minor upper respiratory tract infection and required another course. With both courses though, he did not have um, a full resolution of the cough. Um, he then uh, was also noted to be coughing with all bottle feeds midway during the feed. He was a normal growing child um, with normal stools and there was no other real findings on examination except a really wet cough. Um, so this was concerning. Um, so we organised a chest x-ray that day which was reported as normal. Um, but for me that's really quite abnormal. Um, he's got increased perihilar markings and linear streakings particularly in the right middle lobe. Um, so I put him on a four-week course of Augmentin while we had some investigations organised. Um, the cough did improve during this time, but again, he had a, another viral infection and recurrence of the cough, um, which again is concerning. And this is his CT. So um, in children, uh, you should not see bronchi in the outer third of an axial CT scan. So um, what I mean by that is that this bronchi, you can see all the way up the end there, um, if you imagine a third, oh, a star, yep. So that's way past the third, which would, I'd say is about here. Um, and if he's got tram tracking, so the uh, bronchi don't taper. Um, and he's also got the signet ring sign here, which um, is the artery here and the dilated bronchi. Um, so that's bronchiectasis. So this child uh, went through the the works, the respiratory works, and had a, um, a sweat test, which was negative, luckily. Um, a bronchoscopy had normal anatomy, but grew haemophilus, which is a usual organism for chronic cough. Um, his immune function testing was normal, but I was concerned he might have a subtle immune disorder because of the, sign the significant bronchiectasis he had, um, but the immunologists weren't um, worried. He also had a speech review because he had clinical coughing with each bottle um, and I actually I should have mentioned that in the um, examination and but the speeches weren't worried again and the VSS was normal and he was discharged. I still think the child did have clinical aspiration and was probably a cause for his um, bronchiectasis because it was particularly um, evident in the right middle lobe anyway. So he's got bronchiectasis. Uh, I don't know if we've got time for the last case, but I might just quickly go through. So Brooke um, is a 16-year-old girl who had a daily wet cloth for what the parents described as, as, long, as long as she remembered. Um, but if you nut it down, it was about from the age of seven. Um, she had daily throat clearing, would have post-tassive vomits almost six, seven times a day. Mum said that she could produce sputum, green sputum, to fill her hand if you'd asked her to. Um, so this is very concerning and um, she didn't have a, a, any chest findings except a very wet cough um, and I organised a CT that day, oh, oh sorry, and also he, she had a, a normal chest x-ray in the community um, but she had, I could see a bronchi, dilated bronchi in her right middle lobe here and all this is abnormal as well. Um, so her CT... This is the first few slices of an axial CT scan. She's got dilated bronchi already, which you shouldn't see in the first few slices. Um, she's got varicose bronchiectasis in her right middle lobe there with bronchi that are enlarged here. Um, she's got multiple signet ring signs um, throughout both lung fields. So she had significant bronchiectasis. She went on a, oh sorry, we got a sputum, grew haemophilus, which was great, but staph red flag for anyone with a wet cough. It usually means underlying lung etiology. Went on a four-week course of Augmentin while she had um, 
investigations done, immune function was normal, sweat was 33, um, which is high for her age. Um, so I repeated it and it was 44, I was concerned for CF at that stage. Um, and on review, the cough had improved significantly and parents were happy, um, but she still had a morning cough. So she went to bronchoscopy and had, a, had pseudomonas, got pseudomonas eradication, CF genetics came back positive for CF. So this child had CF. Um, and she's on Trikefta now. So take home messages from this talk is that I tell my patients that a, a wet cough more than four weeks is never normal, don't accept that. Um, especially if there's no break between the four weeks. Um, a two week course of oral antibiotics can be a friend, but if you're needing to use recurrent antibiotics or um, there's no or partial response to this, you need to refer. And uh, protracted bacterial bronchitis, the key thing to learn from that is that they have a normal chest x-ray. Um, an abnormal, abnormal chest x-ray is not PBB, and if in doubt, refer. All right. All right. Very much. <laughs> you get the hot seat. <laughs> So thanks, Archana. And we have 10 minutes left for questions, so we'll start with any questions for Archana, but feel free to ask questions of the other two speakers as well, if you, uh, if you like. Now, um, uh, while we're waiting for that, the um, issue of larvas and combination therapy, that's obviously exploded in asthma. Are you seeing that in this situation as well? And what do you think of that? For chronic cough? Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing much of that, actually. A lot of people have been good at referring when on um, quite low doses of just ICS, which is good. So you can um, just start with simple... Yeah, I always ICS. start. It's whenever I see someone, I start back at ICS and then um, work Escalate up again. Them, yeah. 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 Great. So okay. I can't... There we go, up the back. <laughs> Thank you. It's Jackie here. I'm in PZD. Um, at the moment, we're just seeing children with recurrent viral infection after viral infection of short duration in between, and all of them seem to have a chronic cough. At which point do we call it as a chronic wet cough going for longer than four weeks? Because we'd be referring a lot of patients to you in that situation. Or do we give them time to have a break between viral infections because before we then start antibiotics? And also, what's your definition of a normal chest X-ray? Does peribronchial thickening count as normal? Oh, I've got a... Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, so, uh, good questions. The first part of that would be the, the four-week definition for me um, because there's a lot missed. Um, so the, the little boy, um, the five-month-old, uh, he had the adenovirus and then shortly after the minor respiratory tract infection and the GP was just giving him time in between the month of the initial infection before he started in antibiotics and a month of the second, but no response. So I would say even if he's had uh, a week or two between the viral illness, I would be um, trialling at least a two week course at some stage. The key is that they've got to have a, a break in the wet cough. So even if that break is a dry cough, that's great. It's a break because wet cough means that there's neutrophils in the airway and causing damage, yeah. Most of the time. And yeah. then with chest x-ray, is periobronchial thickening within the, your normal definition? Uh, no, no. So that's not normal. Um, you can have periobronchial thickening with viral illnesses, um, but a lot of the time that's a chronic finding. Um, so when you've got periobronchial thickening with um, florid viral signs, so fevers and runny nose, I'd, I'd be able to accept that, but I'd probably... Um, like to see a normal chest x-ray at some stage, um, even if that's, you know, six, seven weeks down the track. But I guess when you're seeing them, you're seeing peribronchial thickening, um, which makes it hard. But I guess my um, advice would be is as long as they've... If they've got viral symptoms at the time and you see peribronchial thickening, you could probably leave it at that and say it's viral-related. Thanks. Yeah. 